Hello, everybody, and thank you so much for joining us today. Um, we are happy to have you. We've started doing this conversations with educators, and uh, you know, I know that it's hard sometimes to find time, but it is always good to be able just to have a conversation with people that do yes. jobs like us um, and just be able to talk for a few minutes. So um, we are very thankful that you took time out of your day to join us. And um, I'm Carrie Bartholomew, and I am an account executive with Test Town. And we also have Laura Miller with us. Uh, Laura is also an account executive with Test Town. And then I am going to introduce our, um, our guest speakers today. I'm going to share my screen. And what we are going to discuss today is just creating test security documents and everything that goes along with that. And we do have um, a little agenda of what we're going to do. We're going to introduce our guest speakers who we have with us. And we're going to discuss the question that is the topic for today. How do you generate state mandated test administration security documents? And then we'll just have a live question to answer with anybody that has questions or just a conversation. So today we are very thankful to have three of our assessment specialists. Everybody on this panel today is from Texas. Uh, we have Pam Brown, who's from Lubbock Cooper ISD, uh, Amy Gilbert, who is with us and she's gonna talk to us. Uh, she is from the coordinator for student assessment at Granbury ISD. And then we have Crystal Glover, who's the district test coordinator for Amarillo ISD. So thank you ladies for all being with us. Um, again, we appreciate your, your input and uh, we're just gonna jump right in and talk about the question that we have today. Um, how do you generate state mandated test administration security documents? And Pam, we'll just start it off by letting you kick us off and getting your thoughts on the question to get us going. <clears throat> well, I think I'm probably the smallest district here um, and Crystal is the largest by far. Um, and they're going to talk on on their how they do that. But to me, the whole thing about test town, it's more than just test security. It's security for me to be able to answer any questions that might come from the outside. Well, did you do this or did you do that? And to me, and this is a simple one, but one of the brilliant ones, I think that the, the platform provides and that's the seating charts. I think they're very, very important because if there is a question that comes up, you have to know where the students were seated and how that was arranged. And rather than having them draw something out or where it's so simple in test town, it's right there and they can, can check those things. And to me, that has been a blessing. And I know Crystal has a lot of things that she does that um, I'm anxious to hear about. Okay, thank you, Pam. Amy, do you want to jump in and add to that? I would concur with Pam about uh, about the seating chart being an excellent one that we use it all the time too. And I've gone back on multiple occasions and looked at those as well as the uh, attendance rosters um, to make sure that I know who has who is in testing, who's not in testing, and and those things. And and I do. Uh, I do require my CTCs to to generate these things from Test Town because that is the easiest way for the teachers to be able to mark this information without having to have their head down and you know funneling through a, a lot a lot of materials and it's also easy for the CTCs to to go back and do things like the consolidated tracking and those seating charts and room rosters for when they need to pare down the big groups to smaller groups, as well as doing makeup sessions. So they can go ahead and convert those students who were absent to the, 
to the next session that they need and be able to run those forms from that point as well. Thank you. And Crystal, you want to jump in? So a couple of different things to think about. With, with our district, um, we do, of course, use that material control report um, as our seating chart. Um, make sure it's completely filled out. But we also have started using the Google Electronics report um, at all of our secondary campuses. We haven't trickled this down yet to elementary's. Um, it's kind of a new thing, we've only been doing it for a couple of years now. But we're having more and more problems with students having cell phones. And even though the test administrators do their job, they say, okay, everybody, turn your cell phone off, bring it to the front, we're going to put a sticker on it and post your name. You know, you still have kids that are not going to turn in their phones, right? So that electronics form lets you write in. Um, type whatever you want in the box. And we actually have it in our student handbook um, saying that all students will turn in their cell phones and other electronic devices for all testing um, and that they will not be returned until after all students in that group have finished their tests. And it lists what the punishments are if students are caught with their cell phones. So it says you're going to get three days of uh, in-school suspension and you're going to have to pay a $15 fine to get your phone back from the office staff and your test is going to be invalidated. So my coordinators copy and paste that language directly into the electronics form and then put in a line that says, by signing this form, I agree that to all of these things, right? So then there's a line for each one of the students to sign. So every student that's assigned to that, that test room, there's a line, they sign. Okay, I've turned in my cell phone or I don't have one, and I don't know what the penalties are if I get caught with one. This is cut down on our um, having to code students other or getting caught with cell phones massively. I mean, in 2019 alone, we coded for spring EOC, we coded 37 kids other because they got caught with their cell phones. Wow. You know, last spring, two, two, because the kids started taking it seriously. So, okay. Crystal, the, they sign this electronically, no. and then no. You print it out and you put it in the teacher's bucket, just like with their seating chart. Got it. And when the student turns in their phone or tells the test administrator, "I don't have a phone or an electronic device, right? A smartwatch," then or both, they sign it. So when that student then gets caught, they go to the bathroom, all of a sudden somebody sees them with their cell phone, right? Happens all the time. Now that kid cannot say, well, the teacher never asked for my cell phone because I have a signature right here on this form saying, yes, I did. And you sign saying you agree. And now we validate that test. The parents can't threaten to sue us. <laughs> they can't complain. It's all above board. It's all in writing. It's ready to go. It's brilliant. Um, one of the other things that some of y'all may, may have the same thing. So a few years ago, when it changed over to MSS, right, the multi-session scheduling, there's, you can do absent students really one of two ways. You can mark them as absent, and it creates this tracking record that they were marked absent and they were moved to the group. Well, what I found my coordinators do in the first year was skipping that step. Instead of marking them absent and then moving them to a room, they would just move them to a new room. And I really had to correct them on that and say, guys, this, we will do this. We will mark them absent first, and then we will put them into a new room for their makeup test. And what that does for you is it makes sure that you've got that tracking of You know, Pam and Amy talked about, you know, being able to go in and, and find records after the fact, see what happened after the fact. Well, that allows me at a district level to see what my coordinators did. Why, why was this kid not tested yet? So if I'm running a report out of Tide and I'm showing that this campus has 17 kids that haven't tested yet, 
I can pop into their test town and see which one of those kids they've put into maker room because they were absent. And that tells me I have a student out there I need to deal with. I would think I said, hey, did you overlook this kid? Did something happen? They're not in the maker room, they're not marked absent originally, but there's no testing there. So what's going on with this kid? And so it helps us from having those irregularities of you know, them overlooking a kid just because maybe they were late or they were absent that day. And did I just freeze up or can y'all still hear? That's great advice. I hadn't even thought of that part. <clears throat> That's um, my two cents on how we in our district handle it. And um, Pam's right, all of these forms are a blessing. We've had um, several incidents that are avoidable um, actually finally be avoided because we use these processes. Right. Well, I just had a, a message from Carrie that she lost power. <laughs> I don't know if anybody else is dealing with some of the weather. Um, it just got really dark where I live too in Tyler. So we'll, we'll see how this works out for us. But um, she says wow. she's back on. But those are great, great pieces of advice. Um, and so I would love to honestly hear like maybe some of your after the fact, like if you have a specific story um, and how some of these secure test documents maybe really help save or a specific situation. The cell phone one is really interesting to me, Crystal, but like, do you have a specific after it was all done, how using these forms and, and preparing these, uh, generating these uh, mandated documents um, maybe helped with a different kind of irregularity or something that it saved after the fact when you had to look something up? Well, <clears throat> I think some of the biggest irregularities, and, and this is not security in the sense of cheating, but security that we have given the right accommodations to the right student. The ability to, you know, uh, Test Town speaks with our special ed software nightly, and that's the official word and then I pull the official accommodations and attach them to the student and my CTCs are not allowed to change anything by hand because it's not their job. Um, they don't make those decisions and they're not uh, required to do that. So if it's not in the official platform that is pulled in nightly, it's not going to be attached to a student. And you can then, of course, print the accommodation report and get special ed to look over it again in case they've made a mistake. But that that is such an important thing. And that's where so many people get dinged. And it's it's not an intentional error but it is one that is important and especially when a parent says well my kid's supposed to get so and so and they did not and you don't have an answer for why they did not uh to me that is oh one of the <laughs> big big blessings of this program it also adds a step uh for the test administrators because when you do the room accommodations list they have that, number one, they can have it ahead of time. And number two, if a kid says, oh, I'm supposed to get this read to me, then the test administrator can immediately look at that room roster and say, okay, well, it's not listed here, so let me double check. And right. the CTC can then go and do, do the investigation inside Test Town if they need to or whatever. So we, we use that often. So sorry that I, I jumped, I lost power. You know, usually that, that never happens. But anyway, I'm back at it. So one of the questions that I had, first of all, I wish I had had this conversation last, last year. Crystal, that is so smart about the absentee tracking because it was always a struggle, always a struggle in 
I never thought of it in that way. Um, all of the things, I mean, everything that y'all said, I could have taken something from it. So hopefully this is helpful to those that are listening. I know, I know it has been for me. Um, what about, so as we've kind of transitioned from paper to online, um, tell me what you do after. So how do you, we're required to keep certain things for a certain number of years. How do y'all manage that? Well, I have a checklist for my CTCs and they each have a thumb drive. So what I do is, is the required documentation, even that that I require versus what TEA requires, um, they, they put in an administrative folder on a thumb drive and I collect those after each testing administration. That way I have them on hand and if I can answer any questions that TEA has, which I've had to do in the past, so it's not, that's not something that um, is unrealistic. Um, if I've had to look, then I can look without bothering them. And I have it all in one place and it's secure and I have backups and all of that and all of that so that uh, we have all of these files electronically so they keep paper copies on their campus and I keep the electronic files here at the district level so that if there's ever a question of anything, absences or uh, any, any type of you know, thoughts of cheating or anything like that, then I have all of those things at the ready for myself, including the, the, uh, the security oaths. I haven't made that jump to collecting on electronic. I keep thinking about it, um, but I keep thinking to push back to my campuses. We do so much other stuff electronic. I've seen them so much stuff, and a lot of times they're the campuses really aren't honestly up to date on scanning everything. So I've kept it old school so that we keep our campuses, um, and they get a binder from me every year. It has tabs in it. Um, for every administration, for training, and for oath. And behind that, there's a sheet that tells them exactly what they have to keep to find the administration. And um, I actually go out in the fall, um, and I have a little bit, a little bit more downtime. And um, we're not right at the next testing. Start of the year, I go out to the campuses and I audit. And I'm Department of One, so I do it in folks. So each each fall, I audit the third of my campuses. It's just a rotating schedule. Um, and one of the things it allows me to do is those new campus test papers. That's going to be my first interaction with them. So I get to sit down with them, and even if they aren't on the rotation schedule, if you're a brand new coordinator, I'm going to come see you, and I'm going to audit that folder, and I'm going to do it with side two. I'm going to walk you through each of these forms and tell you why we use them, how we use them, why you need to keep them. Um, and I have access to all of the areas that they send me. Um, all of their, their uh, counters, not counters, I'm sorry, all of their closets that they store those in. But each time I do them, like if it's the middle of the summer and they're all off contact to me, I'm going to be I just use my Slack card. I have access to them. their files on the um, But yeah, Amy, gosh, I put it at my fingertips. That does. <laughs> I have to make that jump. Yeah, it is nice to have it have it at your fingertips for sure. Pam, do you keep the 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 long term stuff? At they, your office, or how do you? How do you they do that? they house it on their campus, like Crystal has, and then I I check with them, and if I need something, then I have to go to them to pull their their files. So, you know, some electronic something, yeah, that might be uh, very valuable. But again, it's like Crystal said. Some are much better with technology than others. Um, so I don't know, but it is something to think about. Thanks for that, Amy. Of course. 
I and I have a small district, so, <laughs> so yeah, not, that makes a big difference. Not keeping, you know, fifty-five some garage. One of the things that I have found in the years, we, we were considered a beta district. We've been a test town pretty much since the start. Um, and most of the questions, if TA calls or I get that email and they want information, I say about 80%, 80 percent, I can jump on the test town and answer those questions. Yeah. Is, is in there, even if it's an archive, I can jump back in my archive and I can see this is what happened with that kid. And that's one of the reasons I love that ability to mark on action. I don't have to ask the campus, I can see it. Right. And that I would think that would alone be, was yeah. worth the price of admission today. Exactly. <laughs> and, and it seems like every time we have any kind of group like this here on TSNAP or NAPP or anywhere, like you always, no matter how long you've done this, you can pick up on something that you can like put into practice right then and be better. Like exactly. we're leaving better every time. And so we're, we, this is new, this conversations with educators is new for us this year. And um, this is why we do this. I mean, we're all about trying to just connect and whenever we can just have a few minutes to talk there, you know, who knows what, what you might learn <laughs> whenever you're able to jump on. So for those of you that are uh, just on and have been listening to all this, feel free to type in the chat any questions that you have for the panel, um, or if you have any comments of things that maybe we have not, you know, talked about that you do, we'd love to hear it. Um, also, like I said, this is something that we are doing monthly, and we'd love to have um, you know, if you would be interested in being a panelist and having conversations with us, chat is disabled. Okay, let's let's see if we can. <laughs> Oops. Would, can, let's. Can you go to the question answer? Is question answer also mine, disabled? Yeah, mine can start with the Q and A. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go. And I'll work on the chat part too. We'll see how that works out. But start with Q and A. Okay. So Q and A will work if you can if you can get in there and type there. Perfect. Um. So. Along this kind of line, let's one more question for the group. And if you are talking to a new district testing coordinator, I know that y'all both y'all all mentioned, all three of you had mentioned at some point the things that you require. You require certain things of your campus testing coordinators in certain ways. And then there are some things that you, you know, they can do how they want to. But what would you or just any advice on this this realm kind of? What would you tell a new district testing coordinator maybe about this topic is the most important thing? Uh, well, I think, first of all, the most important thing is that you are a test hound user. That goes <laughs> without saying because you cannot control all of these things any other way. You can have systems that you've used and things, but why work? harder when you can work smarter. So that's the first thing. And then use every feature that's available. Take your time to get on there and look, watch some of the videos if, if you're new to it. Uh, do these kinds of things. I mean, when you think how long and oh God, it's been a long time that I've done this, I learned something today. And that's what's so great about it. You will learn from when anyone else hears you're a test town user, you start talking, well, blah, 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 how you do this. But get familiar with all of the facets when you have a little bit of time, especially if you're new. And I forget to go in and look at it from the coordinator's viewpoint. And I need to do that more often. Yeah, on that, I I learn stuff from my CTCs all the time. Yes. Uh, you know, about Test Hound and other formats and you know what they what they figure out in Test Town they share with me as well. So so yeah. it is a very round round table discussion with your CTCs as well. That's where the idea of using 
platform came from. One of my high schools said, we're having this problem. What do you think, if we try using this film, do you think it'll do anything? I said, I don't know, let's try it. You know, they used it once and they had less problems. They used it again, they had hardly any problems. And so now all of our secondary is um, For new coordinators, I would say also T-SNAP. I always have to promote with T-SNAP. Um, and the share feature alone, just not having to recreate the wheel and being able to reach out that network of people to reach out to is open. And that's always required. Okay, awesome. And we do have one question, and it is for Amy. Um, it, it is, do you collect your secure district documentation at the end of each test administration or at the end of each testing year? And she's talking about the flash drives. At the end of each test administration. And then when we get back together, I have work days throughout. So I'll pick them up when they do their check-in for different things. And I will go ahead and look through them, you know, just random check through them and then give them back to them at the work day so that they can continue to the next administration. However, I don't know that it would be, um, I mean, I, I don't think it would be a problem if you wanted to pick them up at the end of the year as well. But I do keep them at the end of the year. I will keep them then until our fall update. So. Okay. Thank you very much. And it is amazing how quickly 30 minutes goes by <laughs> when we're having this little conversation. So we are very close to the end of our time. And again, I want to thank you all so much. I'm going to check the chat, the questions one more time. Laura, is there anything in the questions that I'm not seeing? Okay. No, no. Yeah, I think we're clear in both spaces right now. So um, thank you for those of you that have joined with us live. And for those of you that will be watching it recorded, um, it is always great to, to be able to get together. Um, I'm gonna share my screen one more time. And as we end up, I just wanna make sure that everybody is, a, is aware of the other tools that um, EAI has to offer. Everything that we do is about operational efficiency. And so while most of us on this meeting um, are dealing with test hound and things to um, just logistically make everything more streamlined with testing, we do have other tools. We have Embark that is a curriculum tool, Cardonix, which is a master scheduling tool, Pathways, which is graduation tracking that you may be hearing more about soon, um, and then also an evaluation tool. So all of these tools are uh, designed to help make the hard things in the jobs that we all do easier and more simplified. And all the tedious things that, that takes your time is our goal is to give time back and to give you tools that can help help you do the jobs that you do. And we just wanna, wanna thank you and feel free to reach out, out to us at any time. Um, it's, it's been great to have this um, talk and we hope that you'll join us again next month. Laura, anything that you want to add? No, just thank you. Thank you again for all of your time. And um, and we hope that uh, if you're in Texas last week went well. <laughs> Everybody yeah. is looking forward to um, some much needed downtime in the future. So hope you all have a great rest of your week. And whenever you, you uh, get out of school, I think it's kind of a mixed bag across the country. Some are earlier than others. Um, just hang on a little bit longer <laughs> and enjoy your downtime when it comes. And thank you all. We love supporting you in every way. Um, and thank you for what you do. Thanks everybody. Bye. Bye.